Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Christian Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Steph Thurling. I'm the Executive Director of Christian Parenting, a mom of three, and I am so glad that you're here. This is a place where you can bring your real self, no matter what that looks like today, and be given the space, resources, and encouragement you need to set aside perfection and grow into the perfectly imperfect parent God made you to be. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I get to sit down and talk with my really good friend, Greta Eskridge, today, and you guys are going to love everything that she has to share. Greta is a mom of four. She's a homeschooler, she's an author, and just an all-around joyful person. So Greta and I met a few years ago, and she is just such a blessing to my life. I appreciate all of her wisdom, and I just learn so much from her all the time. She is someone who speaks gentle truth and encouragement, and I know that you're going to adore her as much as I do. But we cover a lot of things in this conversation. We talk about connecting with our kids and helping them pursue their passions. We also talk about parenting in the teenage years and the slow process of letting go and allowing our kids to grow beyond us while maintaining a solid relationship. I know you're going to love this. Enjoy. Hi, Greta. I'm so glad that you're here today. Hi. I'm glad too. Yeah. So, okay. Greta and I have many kind of random connections that yeah. have allowed us to get to know each other over the past few years. Yeah. So it's super fun to have you here on the Christian Parenting Podcast talking all about families. I can't wait. Thank you. Me too. So I want to start, though, by learning about your family. So can you tell us who's in it and then use one word or a phrase to describe your family? Okay. So my husband, Aaron, we are celebrating 25 years of marriage next month. Congrats. So um, it's pretty awesome. And then we have four kids. Our oldest son is 19. Then we have a 17-year-old son, 15-year-old daughter, and an almost 12-year-old son. Three boys, one girl, lots of teens. And I would say one word that describes us is passionate. Ooh, that's a good one. Why passionate? Um, lots of big feelers, <laughs> lots of emotion. <laughs> Lots of artists, (laughs) lots of creative people, lots of people who are just, um, yeah, just we feel strongly about a lot of different things, whether it's having fun or, um, you know, activities that we love to do or causes, Um, yeah, just passionate about life. I feel like, so we are a passionate family as well, big feelers, and I used to kind of be in denial about it. And then people would ask me when they would see our kids be big feelers. They're like, Passionate. are you and Trevor big feeling, big emotional people? And I'm like, no, I don't know where they get it from. And now I'm like, it's me. <laughs> it's me. They get it from me. <laughs> it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> I'm like, I can finally admit it all these years. Yeah. Like, I am a big emotions person. So, but I think it's good. I think that's a great it thing. Is. I love it. It is. Yeah. My oldest, I would say my oldest son, he, um, demonstrates his passion differently. Like he's the most even keeled, um, calmest member of our family. He has like incredibly uh, long fuse. Like he does, if he ever gets mad, this is how it's like, this is what it's like. He'll be like, you guys. And all of us are like, oh my gosh, James is mad. (laughs) But his passion comes through. Like he's an artist and he is so passionate about his art and the way he talks about it. And Mm -hmm. And the way he pursues it. So, um, yeah, the passion. And then we have the big feelers like me. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a rainbow. And I'm like <laughs> jumping out of the car, freaking out, yelling. So there's all different ways it, it expresses itself in our family with different family members. But we definitely are passionate people. Yeah. Which, yeah, it can be hard, but it's also really fun. For sure. And we're going to talk more about that later. But before yes. we get to that. I also ask all my guests, what is one thing that you want every parent to know? This is a great question. And um, it's very hard for me to answer because I love to say too many things. (laughs) But I would say that the thing that I I think every parent should know is um, more than anything else, you should choose to and work towards pursuing relationship with your Mm -hmm. kids because you want to stay connected with them through the entirety of their life. And so make that the the 
ultimate goal, choose relationship, choose relationship, choose relationship. That is a really good reminder, especially as we're in summer. <laughs> and they're around more and it can be a little more stressful. And like, I feel like there's a little more of an urgency to feel like I need order. I need all these things yes. to be done. But yeah. relationship has to come first. Yeah, I feel like I, that was a reminder for me. Thank you. <laughs> I, I just was speaking to um, a group of moms recently and, and I reminded them that sometimes as moms, we see our kids like, as a project. Like mm. there's so many things that we need to teach them when we feel the weight of that responsibility. Like when they're little, like, you know, learning to chew with their mouth closed and not wipe their boogers on the wall next to their bed. And, Important you know, things. to <laughs> learn how to cut their own fingernails and grooming. And then as they get older, like look people in the eyes talk and um, don't be on your phone all the time. Like have connection with people and learn to drive. And what are you looking for in a mate? Like, we can be weighed down by that responsibility. And so we just always like look at our kids as projects, but sometimes we just have to step back from that and just be like, I just want to be with you because I love you. Mm. I love to hang out with you. You are my person. I enjoy you. And step back from the project mo- mode, project mom, and just be like, I love you. I want to be in relationship with you. So I have to tell myself that a lot, but... It, it makes a difference, I truly believe. Yeah, thank you. That's a really very good reminder that we all probably need to hear frequently. So thank you. There are, we could talk about that probably all day long. There are yeah. so many things that we could talk about with you. You are an author, you're a speaker, you homeschool. Yeah. You teach parents about the dangers of pornography for their kids. Um, you're passionate about connecting with kids, relationship with kids. We could talk about sourdough bagels and sprinkles. <laughs> Those are your passions too. Dutch sprinkles. Um, so many options. But we, I kind of told you before, I feel like as I've gotten to know you and as I followed you on Instagram, I think one of the really amazing and impressive things about you and your family is how you're really tuned into your kids' passions and their strengths and you help them to build upon them. Um, I mean, we'll get to it, but I think one of your... You have an Eagle Scout. You have some artists. Mm. One of your sons is in a search and rescue program in your community. Mm. I think yeah. it's cool. But one of the goals in parenting, I think, is to help our kids become their own people. You know, like make yeah. their faith their own, their goals sure. become their own, their success become their own. So, like, how do we help our kids to do that? Mm. I, I love this topic because um, it's something that I have tried to be aware of from the time they were little. And um, I've always made it a goal to my, uh, of my own to study my kids, like to get to know who they are, what lights them up, like what are their passions, what makes them be filled with joy and excitement, and um, what are the things that they struggle with so that I can help them grow in that area, what are the things that I see in them that are amazing and to speak truth into that, and even the areas that are struggling, that where they're struggling, to to talk to them about those things, pray with them about them, and give them opportunities to grow in that area. So I've just really made it a point from the time they were little to study my kids, to get to know them um, in- intentionally. Like, of course, we know our yeah. kids because we live with them. <laughs> we see the best, we see the worst, but to just really like to think about it, you know? And, um, and then to give them opportunities to grow in those areas and to, um, to pursue them and, um, to join in those areas with them. I think that's important too, because, um, it's easy. Sometimes I think they're like, oh, good. Like this will keep them busy. Right. And they'll have something to do, but if we can actually step into the, the areas and the things that they're passionate and excited about, the things that give them purpose, then that's a connecting point. And like mm-hmm. I said, like relationship matters. So even if it's something we don't really know that much about, or maybe we don't even care about it that much, but if we can step into that, we can connect with them there. They can have the opportunity to teach us, to share. And if anybody should listen to them while they're, they talk excitedly about something, it should be us, their moms and dads. Like we're the ones who should say, yeah, I care about the things that 
light you up. It should yeah. be us. Okay, so tell us a few of the things that your kids do and kind of maybe like an example of how you've helped your kids pursue their passions, pursue the things they love, even especially when sometimes those are a little outside of the box, <laughs> like the norm <laughs> thing. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to share an example. because This just happened last week. It's something that's been growing. And it was actually a pa- started as a passion of mine and um, sharing it with my kids and then watching all of them and one in particular take it on as their own. So I'm really passionate about missions and about um, the stories of missionaries and just people of faith, people who have experienced uh, difficulty in their life and um, have been able to walk through that difficulty with their faith made stronger, growing in their faith, even under the most um, unimaginably difficult circumstances. And so from the time my kids were little, I read them lots of stories about these kinds of people. And all of my kids have enjoyed that, but my youngest, who my son, who's almost 12, has um, attached to them the most. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've made a point to read him more stories. He also has pretty severe dyslexia. So reading on his own, um, sitting down to read a missionary story, a book on his own is beyond his reading capabilities right now. So we downloaded lots of books on Audible and he just walks around the house listening to these stories. And um, he's just passionate about it. One of his favorites is um, Corey Ten Boom, the lady who wrote the book, The Hiding Place which if you haven't read it, I'm just telling all the listeners now, (laughs) please read it this summer. You read it on your own and then um, share the story with your kids because it's life-changing. I read it with all my kids. And um, then David has gone on to read or listen to the story on his own multiple times. And um, we found out recently that Corey Ten Boom is buried near our house, which is kind of crazy because she's from Holland. That's where she grew up. She lived through the Nazi occupation during World War II. Um, But after she survived the concentration camp, she traveled the world and somehow ended up in Southern California where we live and is buried like 20 minutes from our house. And my youngest, David, was like, Mom, we have to go visit her grave. And um, I wanted to, but it just wasn't like, Uh, a number one priority. It felt like something we needed to, you know, make happen, but it kept being postponed. And I really wanted to take all the kids. Like I thought, oh, we should all go together. It will be so connecting for all of us because we've all read her story. We love her. But with three teens and their schedules, (laughs) it was hard to just be like, hey, we're going to go visit this graveyard of this (laughs) random person who we know, but we don't know. Like, yeah. um, but David was passionate about visiting. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take David. And he and I went. We picked out tulips because she's from Holland. And mm-hmm. we brought tulips. We found her grave. It was a little difficult to find because it's nothing more than just a small marker in the ground. We found her grave. And it was so emotional. Both of us started to cry. And we're like, Corey, like, She's like, she's not here, but we have a chance to honor her. And so we both just hugged and we cried and we prayed and we thanked God for her life. And it was so connecting for the two of us. And I was so glad that God orchestrated it. That would be just us Mm. because I don't think it would have been the same level of connecting and emotion if the other kids were there. And, um, when we got home, we told everybody, they're like, oh, we want to go. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we'll go back. <laughs> but it was just, um, it was such a unique way to feed this part of his soul that is hungry for stories of people who love Jesus and who are giving to him. And um, it was actually a really simple act to drive 20 minutes, bring some flowers to a grave of someone that he loves but I think it made an impact on him that he's probably never going to forget. I'm never going to forget it. Yeah. Well, what I think is really cool about that story too, as a whole, is that everything about it is a little bit out of the box, right? So 
passionate about missions is so cool. But most 11-year-olds, like my 11-year-old's passionate about baseball. <laughs> so, like, I love that he's passionate <laughs> he about missions. He also loves Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's real. Also, yes. But I think it's really cool. And then the fact that, okay, maybe reading's hard for him because he has dyslexia. So many kids battle with things like that. And instead of just being like, I'm not good at reading. I'm not going to read stories about missionaries, even though I love them. You guys found a way to make Audible work. Yeah. Like, I just think that's really cool how— you pursued a way for him to follow this and then go on a little adventure to go to the gravestone. I think that's a really good example in so many different ways, not just the one visit. Yeah, and I think that that's kind of that whole idea of studying your kids and getting to know them and recognizing, oh, this is something that is really um, lighting him up. And Mm. how can I help fan that flame for him? and share more. And um, we went to a missions conference together at uh, Iola University, which also isn't far from our house, which there were not very many other little kids at the, at the missions <laughs> fair. But he he just wanted to see more about the life of missions. And, and um, so we've been praying that he'll get to go to the mission field as a high schooler. And he also really struggles with food. And so I'm like, hey, if you go to Asia, like that's where he wants to go. Like food is going to be really hard for you. Let's pray that the Lord will empower you to eat the foods that you struggle with Mm. when you go to Asia. Like, so I can see like God is, um, God, if we invite God into the connection point with our kids and we do think outside of the box and we think of all the ways God can minister to our kids' hearts, and we can connect with them, especially in ways that where we might be struggling as a parent. Because if you have a kid, if you're a parent who has a kid who struggles with food or struggles with school, like that can be a point of a lot of anger, frustration, fear, um, fatigue, all kinds <laughs> of difficult feelings. But yeah. if you can be like, hey, um, I want to see how God can meet you in a unique way in your struggle, let's pray that God will help you be open to new foods because you want to go to the mission field. Like, God can do it. Um, but we have to really spend the time to intentionally get to know our kids and be invested in relationship with them in order to capitalize on those places where God can move in unique ways, which I know he wants to do with our kids. If we want our kids to develop a lasting faith, we need to be teaching them about Jesus in the home. Parents are so important in raising kids to know, love, and follow Jesus, but it is really hard to know where to start. There's a lot of amazing content out there, so Christian Parenting did all of the sorting and filtering for you and put together a resource to help you navigate it all. Discipleship Simplified is a digital guide that includes some of the best articles, podcasts, and videos on topics like faith at home, reading the Bible, theology, prayer, church and worship, and character. You'll also find conversation guides and discussion starters, and even scripts to use with your kids. So if you've ever wondered, what do I say when my kid doesn't want to go to church? Discipleship Simplified has a script for that. Or if you want to know how to weave scripture and conversations about faith into your everyday life, Discipleship Simplified has ideas for that too. Since this guide is digital, you can download it straight to your phone or computer and search through resources whenever you need it. I know that this guide will be helpful every time you have a question about discipling your kids. You can go to cpgive.org to download your copy for just $5. That's the best of the best resources from top Christian parenting contributors for just $5. Again, that's cpgive.org. As a working mom, two of my goals for the new year are to take better care of myself and simplify. And one of the ways I'm doing that is with HelloFresh. There is a reason HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They make it so simple. All I have to do is pick my meals and my delivery date and all of the pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step instructions come right to my door. That means less hassle, less wasted food, and they have health forward options like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. The recipe cards are easy to follow and they're full of pictures, so it makes cooking with my kids really fun too. And we all know that when they are involved in the cooking, they're more likely to eat it, so everyone wins. We have a great deal for you right now because 
I know that mornings can be crazy as a parent. I often find myself forgetting breakfast or grabbing something really fast. But you can go to hellofresh.com slash cppodcastfree and use the code cppodcastfree for free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash cppodcastfree with the code cppodcastfree. Okay, so for let's get like super practical for a second okay. for those parents who are sitting there like, my kid's not into missions. My kid's not into baseball. I, my kid <laughs> is not into food or homework, like just struggling. Like I'm having a hard time getting my kids to take ownership of things or be passionate mm-hmm. about things. Like, I don't know what my kid likes. I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. Help me out. <laughs> like, yeah. what advice do you have for that parent? Like, just like a couple of things they can do to study their kids, get in that connection zone. Um, some of the things that we've done that have really worked for us is um, just taking, like spending intentional time together away from like distractions. So mm. away from devices, away from even home and chores and like that to-do list we all have for ourselves and for our kids. So like going hiking together. For me, that is such a powerful way to connect with my kids and to get to know them because we're away from Wi-Fi. <laughs> we're away from cell service. We're um, away from things that we have to do. And it's really just about hanging out together. And um, there's not much more to do than just walk. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not even like, okay, we're going to go bowling where there's all kinds of noise and distractions and you want snacks and, and bowling's fun. Like there's nothing wrong with bowling. But I think if we like strip a lot of that away and we just get down to we're just going to walk together and we're going to be like, oh my gosh, did you see that cool bug over there? I think I saw a snake or I'm afraid I heard a bear. Um, like it's a great way. It has been for us to get to know them. It provides a place to talk, especially if you're raising um, boys or girls who are not so willing to step into like, let's just sit down and talk guys. And they're <laughs> like, what? That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Or that's uncomfortable. But when you're walking side by side, it's a great time to just chat and then those can grow into um, bigger talks sometimes and sometimes not. But I think that is an underrated and amazing way to connect with your kids and to get to know them better. Yeah. Go for a walk together, go for a hike together once a month, once a week, yeah. every few weeks. It's, a, it's really powerful. And like I said, I think underrated. Well, and I feel like there might be some resistance at first, especially if your kids are older and they're kind of at the age where they don't want to talk to you. Like I went to a field trip with my 11-year-old yesterday. They were at a park and he really wanted me to come. So I went. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, I got a head nod. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like that was my acknowledgement because he was with all his friends. So, you know, he's kind of at the age where sometimes he's like, I don't want to go on a walk with you. But once we do... Or yeah. once we go on a bike ride or whatever. Yes. And the more you do it, the more easy yes. it becomes and the yeah. more natural. So yeah. keep and pursuing think, it. And I think it's even okay to acknowledge to them, like, hey, I know we haven't really done this. Especially if you're like, hey, guess what? This summer we're going to start a new thing. We're going for a walk every week together. We're going on a hike every <laughs> week together. And they're like, oh my gosh, you're so crazy. Why? Um, <laughs> acknowledge to them that I know this is this is awkward. So how about let's make a deal. One week, it's just just all of the siblings and us next week, you guys can bring your friends. And because, Hey, guess what? For parents, like one of the best ways to connect with your kids is to also connect with their friends Mm. because you are saying to them, I care about all parts of your life. I care about your friends too. My kids love it when I love their friends. And that doesn't mean that I like talk to them a ton and ask them a ton of questions. It might just be like I'm feeding their friends or I'm saying, yes, their friends can come over or yes, their friends can come on that hike. Um, and that just, it just shows your kids like you are open to all the parts of their life. So make it something that pushes them a little and pushes mm-hmm. you probably because it's going to be hard for you too, but pushes them a little outside of the comfort zone, but also acknowledges this is a step for us. So we're going to make ways for there to be comfort in the midst of the discomfort. Well, and this kind of goes back to your 
first book that you wrote, Adventuring Together, which I read years ago and I loved it. During our homeschooling year, I read it and it was really helpful for me. But I feel like there's, in that book, you talk about how you can connect with your kids through adventure. And I think there's kind of this misconception that it has to be big. Yeah. I mean, I love a big adventure. Like I love a big vacation. I love the big things we all do. But I think what I'm hearing you say is like, meet them where they are. Yeah. And make adventure out of that. Yeah. Which I would love to know kind of how that's changed over the years because you now, I mean, you have three teens and you're feeding all their friends. You're probably (laughs) feeding so many people so much food. (laughs) How has, Uh, what are some of the adventures that you've done, the connecting things that you've done? Like, how has that changed over the years for you guys? Um, I think, you know, as they've gotten older, they crave bigger adventures. And so those um, are um, things that we work hard to help them achieve. Um, And I think that's great. Like, I want them to grow beyond me. Like, that has been another, like, vision I've had from the time my kids were young, that they would grow beyond me. Mm -hmm. And, um, so when we started, like our adventures were like, we're going to a nature center where the trails are marked and we're going to go for a walk and, um, you're going to find, you know, see a bunny and a squirrel and, you know, a lizard. And it's going to be amazing, um, to like growing beyond what I can do with them. So like last summer, my two oldest boys did like a 12 day backpacking trip in the Rocky mountains. Um, I aspire to be able to do that, but I don't know if I can. Um, they said I could, but I, I don't think I can. My husband went with them. And um, I mean, they've grown beyond like the small adventures with me. So giving them a vision, giving them space to grow in those big to those big things, um, but also still maintaining the connecting points that we had when we were little. Mm-hmm. So when they were little. So still reading books together. For our family, that's a real place to connect. Um, Reading aloud, even when they're teenagers and they're like kind of, you know, it's uncomfortable or listening to books together on long drives and just saying, yeah, we're all going to tune into this together. Choosing things that will be of interest to them. Um, Not just saying like, it has to be a book I want. Um, And then also pursuing connecting points like, Yeah, like food is another great connecting point for us. So like we have, you know, certain things that we eat every week, like Friday's Friday burger night and even making it kind of like there's an element of this is the same. Like we know Fridays we're all going to have burgers, but what can we add to it? Oh, I want to try this new ingredient. Oh, I want to add this to the mix and inviting them into that, letting them bring friends, um, knowing that their friends have an open invitation. Um, Just those are ways that we can connect um, with like the the continuity of tradition and things that have always worked for us, maintaining those, but also allowing for growth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I think that it just, when you have those traditions that's so solid in your kids' lives, then they're invited, there's security there. Yeah. And then they're invited into like, now this is what I'm passionate about. How can I explore that or bring yeah. my passions into what I know is safe and secure right. at home? So yeah. you've created an environment where they're able, your connection has been so strong that you've created an environment that they've been able to pursue their own things and move beyond yeah. you as they've gotten older, pursue their yeah. passions on their own and help them yeah. and grow those passions, which is just amazing. Yeah, I, I actually, that makes me think of an, a, my second son, the one who's in the search and rescue program. Like our boys have been involved in Boy Scouts and they love it. They've grown, our oldest achieved Eagle Scout last year. And um, because our two oldest kids are, are close in age, our two older boys, they've journeyed through Scouts together. But our second son decided he wanted to pursue this other um, opportunity, which was search and rescue, working with fire service and law enforcement in our city. And um, he was super excited, super passionate. And I have to admit at first, there was a part of me that wanted to be like, but this is going to disrupt this your scouting and what you 
you've done for years with your brother and your dad. And it's been so powerful. And I kind of didn't want him to do it because it was going to change something that had been really awesome. Mm. And um, we went to the opening night where they was like the information night. And he was so lit up. Like he was just so excited. And I was like, I know him. I've studied him for all these years. And the parts of him that um, I see are excited about this are the parts that are designed by God perfectly for him to be in this. Mm. And I had to say, okay, you have to go. You have to do this. Of course you do. You were made for it. This is, this is who you are. This is who I've seen you to be from the time you were a little boy. And so sometimes, yes, letting them grow is going to mean we have to let go of the things that we love. We even have to let go of good things for another good thing. I kind of, like, I'm listening to you, and I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful, but I also hate that so much. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I mean, that's a really hard part of parenting. Like, that is so hard, especially when you're like, but— you and your dad have been doing scouts forever and your brothers do scouts and this is our family rhythm and now this new thing is going to disrupt that. And I think it's so tempting as parents to be like, but scouts is good enough. Yeah. Especially when search and rescue with the fire department and police department, like that sounds scary. Yeah. And you have to go out like two in the morning and do call outs and I have to drive you. (laughs) But then when you just hear them talk and you see, like I said, you see that light inside of them and it's just like, okay, we will um, we will let go of this good thing for and, and hold on to another good thing because um, they're individuals. We have to let them grow as individuals. We hold on to the family unit as much as possible, but ultimately it is our job to let them grow beyond us. And that's a, a long process over the time of their childhood. And it, like I told you earlier, it bumps into like hyperspeed in those teen years and they really do start to grow beyond us. And that's hard, but it's also really beautiful. Yeah. But when you put in the work to build the trust and the connection when they're younger, then when they get to those teenage years, you know, and you yeah. see, like you've done the studying and you're like, this is it. This is what you have to do, even though yeah. it's hard because I say it all the time, but parenting is made up of a million moments of learning to let go. Yeah. And I just think you have to let go more and more in the teenage years. Yes. Yeah. Mm, it's fine. <laughs> I'm like, fine. <laughs> it is. And fine. that's why you like, I'm not there yet, but yeah. I'll get there. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's why you're like, okay, I will make great food because they'll come home for food. I will be the one that drives because that's a place to connect. Like, yeah, I just always great. try to look for as many places where I can step in and um, be with them, even mm-hmm. in the middle of the letting go, you know? Yeah. So, yes, yeah. I will sign up to drive. I will say, sure, bring your, your kids. We'll throw another burger on. Like, bring your friends. Um, yeah, I'll sign up for that because I want to let go, but I also want to um, hold on to them. So I'm going to be the place where... Um, they can come back to. Yeah. Well, and then you get to kind of grow into that next phase of parenting where you're into more of a friendship relationship. Yeah. Then. Yeah, and that's really fun. Yeah. It really yeah. is. And you have that in the next few years ahead of you, which will yeah. be great. And I'm glad you go before me so I can watch you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I that's my favorite that. part about teens, actually, is that they are, like, we're already moving into the friendship stage and it's really fun. Like, I already feel like we were at the beginning of it and it's just so much fun. I was a high school teacher before uh, we started having kids and I became a stay-at-home mom and um, I chose high school. I always thought I'd be an elementary school teacher, but then I, you know, spent time in elementary, middle school and high school. And I was like, oh, high schoolers are so fun. Like, yeah, they've got a lot going on, but they're so fun. Like you can banter with them and joke and you can have a different kind of relationship with them. And so that's just what I've experienced with my teens. And it is a really fun time. It's challenging, but you're not having to, you know, brush anybody's teeth anymore or (laughs) wipe your teeth bottom. They can (laughs) do a lot of stuff themselves. And so then the big stuff you, that they need your help with, you get to be there for not all those little things because the little years are exhausting. 
it's a level of exhaustion that I don't think is like anything else. A little, little kid years. It is next level. Every time I'm with a little, a little one, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> they don't stop. <laughs> they don't stop. I have yeah. a two-year-old nephew and a one-year-old nephew. They're yeah. tiring. Yeah, They're sweet. It, yeah, it's and that's what it has to be. Like to get you through that level of exhaustion is because they're so incredibly darling and wonderful. They hug you and kiss you and it's just incredible. Yeah. But the teen years are less, I would say, exhausting physically and you get to connect with your kids in a different way. So if you just, I don't know, I think I love every stage of parenting for different reasons. And so I just try to really enjoy each one. Mm-hmm. And like, just dive into it. Yeah, all in, in every stage. Yeah. All the good exactly. and all the hard too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so before we go, can you tell us how how people can connect with you, where they can find you, all the things. Okay, I will. Um, so the place that I'm most active is Instagram. And that's, I would say, head over there. Um, my handle is Ma and Pa Modern. Or you can just search Greta Eskridge. I'll come up either way. Um, you can find kind of more, a bigger picture of me, more um, info on my website, which is GretaEskridge.com. I have articles there I've written about parenting and all the other things <laughs> that I love to talk about and passionate about. Keeping kids safe um, in a digital world and all that stuff. It's all on my website, GretaEskridge.com. And those are the two main places Um that's where you can find me. I don't have time to dabble in everything else. I can barely no do those two things. <laughs> oh, also I have two books. I forgot. <laughs> I'll link your books. I'll link your website. You can I'll find me in the, in the pages of my books. <laughs> I will. I'll make sure those are all in the show notes for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for being on today. I hope that you have to come back soon. I would love it. It's so fun to talk to you. I feel like yeah. we could talk for a long time, so it's good we that you're could talk, it up. <laughs> we could talk for a really long time, which means you'll just be back and we'll talk about okay. more things. All awesome. Right. I can't wait. Yeah. Thank you, Greta. Thank you. I hope that you got some practical and inspirational ideas for connecting with your kids during this time with Greta. I want to encourage you to schedule some one-on-one intentional time with your kids and start studying them. I would bet that you learn some amazing things. As always, thank you for listening. May God bless you this week. May you remember that God loves you and knows every one of your interests, passions, and desires, and He cares deeply about all of them. May you model His love towards you for your kids as you study them and love them. Thank you so much for listening to the Christian Parenting Podcast. If you haven't subscribed, you can do that now, and that way you won't miss an episode. You can connect with us on Instagram at at christianparenting underscore org and see more resources at christianparenting.org. And if you're a mom raising daughters, we have the perfect course for you. Visit cpguides.org to learn more about our Helping Moms Raise Confident Daughters online courses. And lastly, if you have enjoyed this podcast or other Christian parenting resources, please consider donating to this ministry. Visit christianparenting.org and click the donate button. Christian Parenting is 100% donor-funded, and none of this would be possible without your help. We are so grateful for you. You're amazing. God bless you.